Hi, and welcome back to Break 100 Golf. I'm John. You're gonna love today's video because I'm gonna go over my biggest golf sim fails. Some of these costing me quite a bit of money, not all of them, but it has cost me quite a bit, and I'll go over that amount at the end, as well as talking about my biggest fail, which was my PC or my laptop. So before I get into this, if you like this video at any point, please hit that like button or share it with one of your friends that may be interested in golf sim, because if this video is not liked, it is not going to be shown to too many people. This would be the greatest honor you could give to me. All right, so let's start right off with the mat. Now I've gone over some of these before, but I really wanted to focus on the fails only. And I really never focused on how much money it actually has cost me because once I added it up, it made me physically sick. So let's talk about the mat. So I bought this mat for $145. It held up very well. But as I practiced over the winter and I got out into my golf league, I realized that I was hitting behind the ball. Why? Because I wasn't in the beginning paying attention to or I didn't understand golf sim data as much as I do now. And what was happening was I was hitting behind the ball and the club was bouncing and still hitting the ball. So sometimes, in fact, most of the time, you'd still strike the ball fairly well. So it's basically hitting and sliding or bouncing and hitting the ball. Well, that's not real. In the real world, if you hit the ground, it's going to dig into the dirt, catch some grass or, or something, and it's going to cause you to have a problem. So what I found out was when I got out in the real world, I was hitting behind the ball and I couldn't understand it until I figured it out. And that was because I did not have a quality mat and it was causing me to think that I was striking the ball when in fact I really wasn't. And I wasted $145 on that mat. I ended up buying the Real Field Country Club Elite, which is $599. Uh, I wish I had bought that right from the beginning and not wasted the $145 because the reality is it's just so much better of a mat. It's been on the market for 18 years and it really has demonstrated to me that it is a much more realistic, you know, striking result. So if I hit slightly behind the ball, it's going to penalize me for that, okay? Just a lot more realistic mat and I really love the mat and it's just held up tremendously well with over 10,000 you know, ball launches at least probably 15,000. And honestly, there is zero wear on the mat and it's a five by five mat. So you could just keep rotating it. Now this thing is heavy, but honestly it's worth it because it doesn't move. In my old mat, I would swing my driver and the mat would move and I'd constantly have to fix it. You know, on the concrete floor, this thing doesn't move at all, but it is heavy. All right, so I wasted $145 and the mat was a fail. Next topic is the projector. Now, I initially wasted $230 on this projector because the fact is I have a one by one ratio screen and I don't recommend you buying that even though this is an awesome enclosure and a screen. I wanted it to fill up just one bay of my garage, which basically it does rather than go with like a 10 by eight, which is more of a four by three ratio. And I definitely couldn't do a 16 by nine ratio, which is like a 12 by eight. So really important for you to determine what you want for your enclosure or your screen or whatever you're gonna to do to build your golf sim, but also remembering that not all projectors are created equal. And this projector was not capable of projecting a one by one ratio in 1080p and its native ratio, which most of these projectors are, is 16 by nine. But in order to make it 16 by nine, you'd have to have a 12 by eight enclosure. Well, I don't. I have a one by one enclosure or an eight and a half by eight and a half foot enclosure, which I love by the way. So I ended up getting a BenQ LH820 ST, which is a short throw projector that is capable of displaying a one by one ratio 
very easily, including having a setting for it. Now this is a $1,900 projector, okay? But I wish I had bought that right from the beginning because it's much brighter, a higher lumen intensity, and it fills the screen entirely, recognizes what the resolution is, and just projects it and sends it the data back to the computer and just really makes it communicate very, very well. The original projector, I couldn't do anything with it. I could never project it. So I only used like a 16 by nine ratio and projected only about 60% of the image on the screen. And it just wasn't good really for the channel and it wasn't good for the immersiveness, if that's a word, it is now, for the immersiveness of your golf simulator, which is really important. I, I wanna feel, and the first time I put the image on the screen and started playing with it at Pebble Beach, I started like getting dizzy because I'm like, wow, I'm like this close to it. And it just really drew me right in. And then I got over that very quickly, but man, what a difference a projector can make. Don't skip on the projector, don't skip on the mat. In this case, I wasted $230 on a cheap projector. I guess I have a projector that if I want to use, you know, like outside and get a screen and do like movie night outside or something like that, but I've yet to do that. So quite frankly, I wasted $230 on the projector. Let's move on. So your ball. So I went through about four dozen Chrome Soft X's the Callaway Chrome Soft X's, which is my favorite ball, or the Chrome Soft ERC Soft. Those are about $40 a dozen, and then the Chrome Soft X are about $50 a dozen. And I just kept going through balls, because with Golf Sim, you know, if you have a ball that ends up, you know, coming out of your enclosure and hitting something and putting a crease in it, or it gets cracked, it's obviously gone. You might be able to use it for a water ball outside. But the reality is, I could buy two dozen Kirklands for $27.99. So the reality is I don't really see much of a difference between those two balls when it comes to golf simulation. Now I really love the feel of the ball inside of say 170 yards, like the Chrome Soft X and ERC Soft, which is my favorite ball out in the real world golf. But when it comes to golf sim, I don't think it really makes much of a difference with those two and I could have saved $144 on not wasting those balls, okay? And saving them for real world golf, which I really enjoy using those in the real world. So I wasted $144 on golf balls unnecessarily. All right, the next thing did not cost me money, but it was a huge fail. And it cost me the most frustration and it cost me the most time and I almost wasted $600. Let me explain. So I did not realize that my Bluetooth connector in my gaming PC was not strong enough in my three car garage for whatever reason. And I had nonstop disconnections with my Garmin R10, both with Awesome Golf and with GS Pro. So, I mean, I fought this for weeks. It was basically unplayable. I was getting very upset and I almost bailed on the Garmin, except it wasn't the Garmin's fault. It was the fault of my internal Bluetooth connector in my PC, which didn't work well in my three car garage. So I almost bailed on my Garmin and almost wasted $600 and I was that close. I was within a half hour of doing it because this was the last draw thing so I'm like, I'm just gonna stop and I'm gonna try something. And I ordered a Bluetooth connector on Amazon for $15 that had an antenna and I disabled the internal Bluetooth connector and I haven't had a disconnect since. So that was 100% the problem. And Bluetooth connectivity, it's very strong and it's very reliable for these type of things if it's strong enough in the area that you're using it in. But in this case, it wasn't. So keep that in mind if you ever have a problem like that with a Bluetooth enabled monitor like the Garmin. All right, the next item is my Golf Sim PC. And this is the one that cost me by far the most money. In fact, half of what I've wasted in money. 
So initially I tried GS Pro with my old computer. I knew it wouldn't work, so I tried it. And of course it didn't. I tried messing with the settings. You really need, if you're gonna use any high-end golf simulator software, you need a computer that you know, drives the specs that this software recommends or requires. And so I bought a gaming laptop without doing enough research on that. And in the end, I wasted $1,200 because I bought a cheap gaming laptop for $1,000 because it had great reviews but it didn't work very well with GS Pro, especially anything more than, you know, the lowest graphic setting. So, and the fan ran the whole time. It sounded like a jet engine on the other side of my garage. And it was affecting my videos, you know, with, you know, the noise in the background and stuff like that. So, you know, I updated the memory, it cost me a couple hundred bucks to upgrade the memory from 16 to 32 and then from 32 to 64. And while that helped a little bit, the true power of your gaming PC for golf simulator software is going to be your GPU. So I'm gonna to recommend to you that you have an RTX 3060 or better GPU for your golf sim uh, PC and 16 gig of memory or more. Really 32 gig is probably ideal if you're using 1080p uh, to project your image and then also an i7 or higher, like i7 or i9 CPU. Now, if you're using 4K graphics, you're probably gonna want a RTX 3080 or higher with 32 gig of memory or higher and an i7 or i9. Now, don't take it 100% from me, but you wanna look at whatever the software manufacturer says its minimum recommendations are for your PC specs on their website before you buy your software or do a subscription to your software because you will be potentially sorry like me. All right, so I wasted $1,200 on this laptop and I didn't need the laptop at all. So yes, big waste of money, $1,200. I could have bought a lot of nice things for my golf simulator or a new set of irons with that $1,200. All right, the next one is golf tees. Now, there are a couple things I wanna say about golf tees with golf simulators. First of all, if you keep putting a golf tee into a mat that will accept a tee, like mine can, in the same spot, which like with my uh, Skytrack system, you have to put the ball back in the same spot every time. So if you keep putting that tee back in the same spot, it's eventually gonna wear a hole in that spot and that's gonna be a problem for you. So I ended up buying these plastic tees that I got on Amazon. They're like $10 for 20 of them. In the past, I've done uh, videos about them. Uh, I'll put a link to that one video where I did the complete build on the golf sim. And I talk all about those products that I've used in the past. So I'll do that in another video. But also bird tees are really, really good for tees and they don't go up through the mat. And I'll explain. So those rubber tees that come with a lot of the mats, they feed up through the bottom of the mat, which the base of the map is, or the mat is like foam or rubber. And really what happens is after you hit it so many times, it pulls right up through the bottom of the mat. So I repaired my mat many, many, many times, and then eventually went to these plastic tees, which are kind of like the burr tees. And it really made a big, big, big difference and uh, the launch monitor doesn't pick them up at all. So be aware that these tees can destroy your mat and uh, using something like a Bertie or these plastic uh, like golf sim tees that I use really do a great job. All right, next thing is heating and cooling. And this cost me about $120. So I bought a couple of electric heaters for the winter time for the garage. I do have a finished garage, so it does help, but a lot of times, and people will tell you, if you have the Garmin R10, because of the Doppler radar, you can get radar interference from a fan, including one that's built into an electric heater. So the, I bought these electric heaters for like 60 bucks a piece and it shut down my Garmin. It just kept starting and stopping. I'm like, what the heck is going on? And then I realized what was happening when I shut the fan off or the heater off. You can't even run a fan in some instances uh, because it'll shut the Garmin off because of the Doppler radar. Now I do have a heat pump that 
I have, luckily I have windows in my garage, so I, I'm able to put a portable heat pump in there. So that helps in the summertime because I can cool my garage down to a temperature below 76 degrees, which makes it very comfortable to golf in. And then in the wintertime, as long as it's like above 30 degrees or so, the heat pump works fairly well. And then I went to a 1K kerosene heater, which is an indoor uh, kerosene heater. And that's like 22,000 BTUs. And that does a really, really good job. But I wasted my money on these electric heaters. Now, the weird thing is, is I hung curtains that I pull out on a track that's on my garage ceiling for, you know, just for aesthetics for my channel. And when I hung the curtains, it stopped the radar interference, which I don't know why. But now electric heaters and fans can be ran in my garage. For some reason, it doesn't knock the Garmin off. I don't understand why. But anyway, next is software. Now, I wasted money on software, $470 to be exact. That was just not right for me. Now, this one is very irritating because, you know, there are software options out there that I never made videos about. And I don't want to say what they are because just because they're not right for me doesn't mean that they're not right for thousands of others. And I know they are. And it's unfair for me to bash them. And I'm not going to do that. I don't want that kind of a channel. So everyone has their personal preferences for features and quality. I use GS Pro, Awesome Golf, and SkyTrack. So, you know, GS Pro is probably the best for courses. Well, Golf Club 2019 probably has the most courses, but GS Pro has over a thousand golf courses and they're high end, you know, graphically amazing. I really love that software. Awesome Golf, I love for practice. And SkyTrack just overall is incredible for practice and course play. And then, you know, it's the one I use when people come over now because you have a side sitting launch monitor, right? And that side sitting launch monitor does not get interrupted when people behind you are moving around because the launch monitors that sit behind you, like the Garmin, if you move even the slightest bit and you got three people in your garage behind you moving around, it knocks it off all the time. So that's what I use. But going back to the software, I wasted $470 on software, which I'd like to have back. So the total amount of money that I wasted on my golf simulator, unfortunately with tax, is $2,482. And that number is probably low. So I wasted about $2,500. Now with that money, I could buy a full set of tailor-made irons if I want and a new driver, which I don't need because I already have the QI-10. I could buy, almost buy a flight scope Mevo Plus with the Pro package, you know, which I want. And it's just very irritating. And I wanted to make this video so that you don't make those same mistakes. Or if you have to because of a budget, just think about those things. If you can live with that kind of an issue, like the projector, or you know, not having the best graphics for your you know golf simulator with a cheaper computer. And going back to that, if I would have just spent you know another five hundred dollars on my golf sim PC, the whole thing would have been avoided. Now that's going to be about it for today's video. If you did like today's content, please hit that like button. It'll really allow the video to be shared with many more people, and I would really appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel right now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.